our planet might not be as alone as we think. That sounds dramatic, especially coming from an astronomy story. But for decades, there's been a quiet argument in science suggesting that Earth has been traveling with something else. Not a solid moon, not an asteroid, but something far stranger. Something massive, faint, and almost impossible to pin down. Something that appears and then disappears. Astronomers have whispered about ghostly shapes drifting near Earth's orbit for over 60 years. Vast structures, stretching wider than our planet itself, yet so thin they almost don't exist at all. Some scientists swear they've seen them. Others insist there's absolutely nothing there. And that contradiction is exactly what makes this story unsettling. Because if these objects are real, it means Earth has companions hiding in plain sight. And the reason we've struggled to see them isn't because they're small. It's because they don't behave like anything we expect. And this mystery didn't begin with advanced telescopes or space probes. It began with a man staring into the darkness with far simpler tools. In the early 1960s, Polish astronomer Kazimierz Kordyluski was studying a quiet region of space near Earth when he noticed something that didn't belong. Two faint cloud-like patches hovered near specific points in the Earth-Moon system. They weren't stars. They weren't galaxies. They didn't move like anything familiar. They looked more like cosmic smudges, barely holding together. At first glance, it sounded like a mistake. Optical tricks were common in early astronomy. Light scattered, plates distorted, the human eye filled in gaps. Many assumed that's exactly what this was, but Kordylewski wasn't convinced. The locations of these clouds were too precise to ignore. They were sitting near what are known as Lagrange points. If you're not familiar with them, Lagrange points are regions where gravity plays a strange balancing act. In a two-body system like Earth and the Moon, there are specific spots where gravitational forces cancel out just enough for objects to linger. Think of them as cosmic resting places, where something can stay parked without constantly burning energy to remain there. There are five of these points. Three of them are unstable. Anything that drifts into those regions eventually slips away unless it's actively corrected, like some of our most important space telescopes. But two of them, known as L4 and L5, are different. They're stable. Objects that wander into these zones don't easily leave. Dust accumulates. Debris lingers. In other systems, asteroids gather there in massive swarms. So if something were hiding near Earth, this is exactly where it would go. And that's what made Kordylewski's observation disturbing. These clouds weren't randomly drifting. They were positioned perfectly within these gravitational sweet spots. He called them libration clouds. Today, we know them as Kordylewski dust clouds. But here's where the story turns uncomfortable. After his announcement, astronomers around the world tried to find them again. And for years, they failed. Telescope after telescope scanned the same regions. Nothing appeared. The clouds seemed to vanish as if they had never been there at all. Skepticism spread fast. Some suggested the original sighting was nothing more than scattered sunlight. Others believed atmospheric interference had fooled early instruments. And without repeatable evidence, the idea slowly drifted toward obscurity. Yet every now and then, someone would glimpse them again. Faint photographs emerged. Barely visible shapes appeared on long exposure plates, but they were so subtle that newspapers couldn't even print them clearly. To most scientists, that wasn't proof. It was embarrassment a mystery that refused to behave properly. And then NASA got involved. In the mid-1960s, NASA organized a series of high-altitude observation flights, far above city lights and atmospheric interference. Astronomers on board these aircraft scanned the same Lagrange points where Kordylewski had seen the clouds. This time, they detected them. Both L4 and L5 showed signs of diffuse dust structures. One was even photographed. Around the same time, orbiting observatories also picked up evidence suggesting something was there. 
Measurements were taken. Sizes were estimated. The clouds appeared enormous, stretching across tens of thousands of kilometers. But just as the case seemed to be closing, doubt returned. A decade later, computer simulations suggested that dust shouldn't survive there at all. The sun's gravity, solar wind, and planetary interference should scatter it quickly. Radar scans turned up empty. Ground-based telescopes saw nothing. Once again, the clouds slipped away. By the late 1970s and early 80s, many astronomers quietly dismissed the idea altogether. It was easier to believe the clouds never existed than to explain why they refused to stay put. But the story wasn't finished. In the late 1980s, fresh observations captured the clouds again. This time, something was different. The dust appeared redder than surrounding space, suggesting it wasn't ordinary debris. Its composition seemed unusual, almost alien compared to the dust we normally detect near Earth. That raised an unsettling question. If this dust wasn't like other space dust, where did it come from? And before anyone could answer, the mystery deepened once more. In the early 1990s, a Japanese space probe passed directly through these regions, searching for dust particles. It detected nothing. No impacts. No clear evidence. To skeptics, that was the final nail in the coffin. But supporters argued the probe simply missed it. If the clouds were thin, shifting, and slow-moving, one pass wouldn't be enough, especially if the structure itself was unstable. And that idea would later change everything. Because what if these ghostly companions weren't solid objects at all? What if they weren't even permanent? The real breakthrough came decades later, when scientists stopped trying to see the clouds directly and instead looked at how light behaved around them. In 2018 and 2019, researchers used a technique called polarized imaging. Rather than capturing brightness alone, this method examines how sunlight scatters after hitting tiny particles. Different materials scatter light in different ways, leaving behind unique signatures. When the images came back, the patterns were unmistakable. The scattered light matched exactly what theory predicted for dust clouds trapped in Earth's Lagrange points. Not plasma, not illusions, not instrument error. The researchers stated clearly that what they detected could not be anything else. To reinforce their findings, they ran massive computer simulations, tracking nearly two million dust particles over time. Under the right conditions, the models showed dust becoming trapped near L5, forming vast, faint structures that mirrored the observed clouds almost perfectly. At last, the evidence stopped fading. But instead of solving the mystery, it made it stranger. Despite being nearly nine times wider than Earth, the total mass of these clouds is shockingly small. The particles are microscopic, some no larger than bacteria, individually invisible, spread thin across an enormous volume of space. That means even though the clouds are huge, they're practically empty, and worse, they aren't uniform. The simulations revealed that these clouds constantly change shape, their density rises and falls. Parts disperse while others reform. Solar wind disrupts them. Planetary gravity tugs at them. Over time, they stretch, thin, vanish, and then quietly return. They behave less like objects and more like a process. Not dead. Not alive. Just endlessly evolving. This explains why astronomers could see them one decade and miss them the next. Sometimes the clouds are dense enough to detect. Sometimes they're so thin they slip beneath our instruments entirely, which leads to a chilling realization. These ghost moons may have existed for billions of years, silently forming and dissolving alongside Earth, completely unnoticed. And they aren't the only strange companions our planet has known. Earth has temporarily captured small objects before. Many moons have briefly orbited us, staying for months before drifting away. Quasi-moons have appeared to circle Earth while actually orbiting the Sun, but those are solid bodies. Rocks. Kordyluski dust clouds are different. They aren't solid. They aren't stable. 
and they aren't temporary in the same way. The gravitational traps that hold them have existed since the Earth-Moon system formed. If dust can collect there now, it likely has been doing so for most of our planet's history. That makes these clouds ancient, older than civilization, older than life as we know it. And yet, we're only now beginning to understand them. Their presence raises new questions about space weather, satellite safety, and how dust moves through planetary systems. It forces astronomers to rethink what it means for something to orbit, a planet. So are these ghost moons always there? No one knows for sure. They may fade and return depending on the sun's activity and gravitational disturbances. They may exist continuously in some form, never fully gone, never fully present. But one thing is now clear, they are real. Earth is accompanied by vast, invisible structures that drift silently through space. Not moons in the traditional sense, but companions nonetheless. And if something this enormous can hide beside us for billions of years, only revealing itself when conditions are just right, it makes you wonder what else is out there, waiting for the moment when we finally learn how to see it.